Sal because terrorists have allegedly used chemical substances as weapons to target pro-Assad troops in Aleppo. Initial reports suggest that dozens of people have been injured. RT correspondent Murad Gazdiev is in Syria for us right now. The number we're hearing, uh, having called the hospitals in Aleppo, our good friends there, is 44 soldiers uh, injured. We don't know exactly how many of them have died, how many are merely sick. Uh, apparently the rebels shelled uh, an area near the airport of Aleppo. The area is called Karem, uh, Karem et Tarab. It's uh, close to the airport. It's depopulated. There's uh, only military, the Syrian military there. And this wouldn't be the first such attack recently. The rebels have been using uh, chlorine gas. They've used it at least three times, uh, according to reports, over the past two weeks. The previous time was on the 3rd of uh, November, before that on the 30th of October, when 40 people, including many civilians, were injured in an attack on, uh, in, an, an, in an attack on New Aleppo during the second rebel offensive uh, on the city during the past, uh, during the past month. Russian hazmat teams, that's uh, nuclear, chemical and biological protection troops, uh, have been to, uh, to, to an area of Aleppo where, the, they've dis where they've discovered, sorry, a mine containing chlorine gas. When they tried to remove the mine, a white gas, a white substance came out. They field tested it, brought it to a laboratory, and they found that, that uh, it's, a chlorine, it's a chlorine gas mine. Uh, there have been, again, as I say, numerous such attacks, as well as regular shelling against Aleppo that's daily, that's happening daily. And there are casualties, uh, civilian, military, all over Aleppo. The uh, International uh, Organization for the Prohibition uh, of Chemical Weapons has been called. Their experts have been invited to Aleppo to examine this evidence, to examine this, uh, these mines, as well as samples of the soil and fragments of other mines, uh, exploded ones, to give their professional opinion. Bring in a guest now. Dr. Saeed Sadiq is a professor of political sociology. He joins us uh, live on the line now from Cairo, I believe. Welcome, Dr. Sadiq. As the situation in Aleppo escalates, things couldn't really get much more worse. But as it does, do you expect more powerful chemical weapons to be used in the conflict? <clears throat> as you know, the, re the Syrian rebels today are in a political uh, dire strait. Um, some of the main suppliers, like the Gulf states, are now very busy with the Yemeni war. Uh, Turkey has its own agenda regarding the Kurds. Now the election of uh, President Trump uh, signals a change in American policy regarding the Syrian conflict. So they feel that uh, uh, they are being abandoned and they have to escalate so that at least they can gain uh, some ground or test the new administration, which is not still you know, in, in the White House before the 20th of January. So they are in a, in a, in a desperate attempt to show that uh, we can do something, that we can uh, challenge the regime, that we are not uh, uh, totally have been abandoned. Uh, so they are trying to do as much as possible. So expect a lot of things before the 20th of January 2017. Russia has already informed the UN, its chemical watchdog, uh, of its beliefs that, that the rebels have possession of chemical weapons, invited the UN to come and investigate. Do you think they will accept that invitation and actually act? Well, the trouble is who did it? Uh, you have so many uh, rebel groups. And from where did they get uh, those chemical weapons? Were they manufactured uh, by them in, uh, somewhere inside Syria? Were they smuggled? And how, did they, you, how do you smuggle something like, like that? As we mentioned before, Gulf states do not have uh, chemical weapons. So either they, it had been provided by, uh, um, you know, through the CIA from Libya, uh, maybe this is the last attempt by Obama before leaving the White House. He wants to uh, continue his policy and escalate it a little bit. Uh, and so providing uh, those weapons, all, uh, you know, the rebels must have reached a way to, to produce uh, uh, such weapons. And uh, they are not that effective. They, they are only injuring. I mean, they are not really killing uh, so far. From the report that we hear uh, now from your correspondent in near Aleppo, it is uh, uh, they're just injuring, and so it's not that uh, uh, fatal. Uh, but uh, again, this is a, a weapon of uh, to scare people, to spread panic, 
to spread this away among uh, Syrian troops, uh, and uh, we don't know what else they, they might have or had been provided. But uh, as I mentioned, I expect uh, more before 2017, 20th of January, when President-elect uh, uh, Trump uh, reaches the White House. We heard a UN statement last month that condemned chemical attacks that have been attributed to President Assad's troops. Um, you've already mentioned how hard it is to know who's using these chemical weapons. Doesn't that give very good reason for the UN to go in and investigate, try and find out who is doing what? Certainly, uh, they need uh, to go and investigate on the field. Uh, I think the Russian Ministry of Defense had some evidence and uh, uh, declared it. Uh, other uh, NGOs had also made the similar declaration. The trouble is how you, how you go from, from here. Uh, are you going to use uh, those, uh, th this evidence and uh, uh, take action? But how you take action against uh, some rebel groups, insurgent uh, groups that uh, are not represented in the United Nations, will not listen to anybody. All you have to do, or the only option, is that you try to pressure the countries that supply them with arms and, and supplies and, and, and money. And this is the only thing that you can do. But it has to be also part of a general political uh, uh, settlement, a, a political compromise, uh, a comprehensive uh, peace process. So far we are only seeing wars and, and battles and weapons, but nobody is talking about the most important uh, uh, solution, which is a diplomatic uh, compromise, a diplomatic solution, uh, a peace conference in which uh, uh, the regime and, and the rebels, the peaceful rebels, not the violent ones, uh, attend and uh, reach a, a, a final uh, solution. This is a conflict that has been going on for six years, and we have seen the heavy uh, human uh, uh, cost for the Syrian people and also the neighboring countries. And uh, the rise of Daesh, uh, you know, ISIL, the, this is also because of this conflict. And instead of, uh, you know, dealing with the root problem, which is a political solution, we are continuing uh, to linger in this uh, endless uh, uh, chemical uh, weapons attacks and and fighting here and there. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Sadiq. Our guest this hour, Dr. Saeed Sadiq, Professor of Political Sociology in Cairo.